Okay, so I want to talk about how we deal with the situation of multiple reactions taking place. So I've written out here two reactions. These both reactions involve C2H6. C2H6 can react in this, according to these two reactions, two ways. It can either decompose to form C2H4 and H2 gas, or C2H6 can react with H2 gas to form two CH4 molecules. So two different parallel reactions that can be taking place in a reactor at the same time. So some of our C2H6 may go this way, other C2H6 molecules may go this way. And we need a way to deal with this. How do we figure out what, how do we analyze a reactor that may have multiple reactions going, uh, taking place? Well, we use the same concept of extent, but in this case, we apply an extent, or write out an extent for every single reaction. So in this case, in this case, we would have the number of molecules of C2H6 out is equal to the number of molecules of C2H6 in plus, I'm going to call this nu1 times extent 1 plus nu2 times extent 2. And then let me explain what I mean by this. We're going to call this reaction 1 and this reaction 2. So we can define extents for individual reactions. And in this case, each individual extent tells us how much of that reaction is taking place, or how, how far that reaction has proceeded. So just like when we had one reaction, we would have an extent that told, told us how much that individual reaction had taken place. Now we have extents for individual reactions that tell us how far each reaction has taken place. So in this case, extent one tells us how far along reaction one has proceeded. Extent two tells us how far along extent or how far along reaction two has proceeded. And the stoichiometric coefficients here are simply the numbers in the equations. Again, negative for reactants, positive for products. Of course, these must be balanced equations. So in this case, these are, these are both negative one because there's one here and a one here, but they're both, C2H6 is a reactant in both equations, so it's negative one. So in actually, actuality, this equation tells us that the number of molecules of C2H6 out is equal to the number of molecules of C2H6 in minus extent one minus extent two. And we can, of course, write other reactions. The number of molecules of C2H4 out is equal to the number of molecules of C2H4 in. And since it only comes into play in the first reaction, it's just simply adding in extent 1. There's no, there's no C2H4 in the second reaction, so there's no extent that comes into play for this reaction, or for this uh, equation right here. And then I can write the H2 out is equal to the number of molecules of H2 in plus extent 1 minus extent 2. So in this case, we actually have hydrogen being produced by reaction 1, so it's plus the extent 1 right here, but it's being consumed in reaction 2, so it's minus extent 2 because it's consumed there. And so we have, you know, competing reactions taking place as regards to hydrogen. Sometimes it's consumed if it goes this reactor, sometimes it's consumed if it goes through this reaction and it's produced in this reaction. So we might have a different extents with different signs. And then finally, in CH4 is equal to, and that's out, equal N CH4 in plus 2 times extent 2. And again, because there's a 2 right there. And those are the equations that we set up. And it's just like how we deal with um, extent previously, except we have two different uh, variables, extent that we have to worry about. But once we're able to identify what extent 1 and its extent 2 are, we can apply them to all of these different reactions here to find out the outlet uh, amounts of the different uh, species. And it's the same type of analysis we did before with other, uh, just one, one type of, ex one extent with one reaction. Okay, there's two other concepts I want to go over as with regards to multiple reactions. 
first concept is selectivity. So the selectivity is basically, as it's defined here, the moles of the desired product divided by the moles of the undesired product. So oftentimes we may have multiple reactions taking place and we will only want one reaction to take place and another reaction may be a, a side reaction that produces molecules we don't want. So for instance in this case let's just assume that this is the reaction we want to take place. We want C2H6 to form C2H4. This is our desired product. We want to get, make C2H4. But some of the C2H6 doesn't want to do that and it wants to react according to equation 2 here, the second one, and CH4 is our undesired product. It's our waste product. It's the thing that we're, might, we're going to have to figure out how to get rid of or throw away or whatnot. CH4 is our undesired product. So to find the selectivity, we'll just take the moles of C2H4 produced divided by the moles of CH4 produced. And that tells us the selectivity. And selectivity, you know, it can be a small number, it can be a large number, um, but it just tells us the relative amounts to how much these reactions are taking place, especially how much of our desired product we're making in comparison to our undesired product. Okay, this next one is a mouthful, and it's the yield. So the yield is defined by this big long equation here, but it's the moles of desired product formed. So in this case, for instance, if this was C2H4, how much of it formed? Moles of desired product formed divided by the moles that would form if there were no side reactions and the limiting reactant were completely consumed. And this whole thing should be multiplied by 100. Just to make it a percentage. So, what does this mean here? What is this big long thing here at the bottom? Well, it basically means, what if this reaction up here took place without this side reaction taking place? If we were to just assume that the second reaction, let's just assume that the second reaction doesn't happen, and let's assume that this reaction right here goes completely um, to goes to completion, meaning all of the limiting reactant is 100% reacted away, zero limiting reactant left, how much moles would we form of our desired product? So again, we have to assume that the second reaction does a place, and we have to assume that our limited rea limiting reactant is completely consumed, disappears when it follows this reaction, and that's how we calculate this bottom part in our yield. And once we have that, then we can just plug in it to these equations. And again, the yield tells us what's our, how much of our maximum, a percent, percentage of our maximum do we actually get. So if we get a yield of 50%, that would tell us we're reaching 50% of our maximum reaction amount. If we're getting a yield of 100%, that means we've reached all of our maximum amount that we could of our desired product, whether it's C2H4 or, or whatever for another reaction. So it's a useful metric to tell us, are we re reaching our desired uh, production of our product that we want to sell or use or, or use or whatever. And so there we have it, our two new other concepts, selectivity and yield.